this was the best looking bike in the parking lot. So I'm just really happy. And I, you know, it's Friday morning. I took off half a day to, to just go right out and meet Chris with Kenny. I'm gonna go back home and, and work this afternoon. And I just feel really blessed today. And I'm glad y'all are here to share it with me. Hey y'all, it's the Jed, but you knew that. Listen, if I sound funny, it's because I've got earplugs in my ears because I just got off the bike. But I got a surprise for y'all today. If you've been watching the channel since day one, you'll know I've been talking about a particular Harley Davidson that I used to ride back in the 90s. And that's an FXR. And last week, I stumbled across one for sale really just a few miles away from where I live. And so I met the guy at a grocery store parking lot. It's a 91, and it wasn't the exact specs I wanted. I wanted an FXR S, SP, ideally, which would have had a 19-inch front with dual-disc brakes. But he had an FXLR, Lowrider Custom. Original owner, 34,000 miles, and the price was right. And the bike, with one exception, is gorgeous. And so I bought it and I want to introduce it to y'all. Hey, listen, I need a favor from y'all. I'm getting great views on the channel, but not a lot of great subscriptions. I've only got 201 subscribers right now. I would really, really appreciate it. If you're watching this and if you're enjoying it, or even if you're not enjoying it, but you want to do me a favor, how about hitting that subscribe button? I'd, I'd really appreciate it. Thanks. Say hello to my new, or new to me, 1991 FXLRC. Stock paint, stock engine, stock wheels. Um, all that's been done to it that I can tell, stock handlebars. All that's been done to it that I can tell is uh, some aftermarket uh, slash cut pipes that have been wrapped horribly. And that's gonna be the first thing I've gotta fix. Progressive suspension. It's got a Makuni 42. And I've uh, talked to the mechanic who's worked on this bike, who tells me he put an Andrews 27 cam in it when he put that Makuni on. And then up front, they powder coated those uh, fork sliders, lower forks, and they put on a six piston uh, J brake. It also got Dyna ignition. So, all good stuff. Paint is in great shape. This um, the center strap is a bit worn. I'm gonna see what I can do about that. Those appear to be a couple hundred bucks to try to replace. It's got some really funky turn signals. That's the other thing you did to it, which I don't like, and I'm gonna do something about that too. Uh, but I am in love with this bike. I'm about to ride it up to Ventura for the first time on the freeway. Oh, it's got a uh, LED headlight too. I don't know who makes that headlight or if it's any good. It's a little ugly from my perspective, but um, that'll have to do for now. Speedo is a little cattywampus in there. I need to replace the gasket, but you can see 33,536 original miles. And I bought it from the guy who's had it since day one, so I know that's legit. Real nice guy, by the way. The Jed is happy, the Jed is smiling. And I can't wait to uh, share rides on this bike with y'all and, and hopefully share a little bit of uh, what I'm gonna do to it once I figure that out. Doesn't mean uh, I don't love my GS, because I do, but uh, I, I really miss having an FXR. I love these bikes. We're gonna talk a lot about these bikes. And uh, I can't wait. Now that uh, now that we got the FXR, you got to do what you do when you have a Harley. So we're at Wide Open Throttle in Ventura, and uh, it's Chris's shop. I just Hi, Chris. just met Chris today, 
It's uh, it's a really cool shop down here. It's at, uh, what's the address? 1473 Tower Square in Ventura. There you go. Uh, Chris has uh, a uh, dyno tuning set up here, and he's the, the tune master. We'll be right back. There's the uh, the dyno room. Chris is uh, big old treadmill for a motorcycle. Look at that. And you're you're dyno tune certified. Yeah. And uh, and you do not just Harley's on this, but uh, yeah, I'll do just about anything with a, you know with a tuner on it. If I can get into the exhaust, I can tune it. Very cool. Well, Chris is a veteran, and uh, we thank him for his service. And uh, if you want to support a cool business, come on down here. All right, and we got a roll, Kenny. Got your glasses? Probably. Got to get my gloves, my glasses, and we're gonna bring the FXR down here and get a dyno tune done on it, just uh, to to get a baseline for where we're at, and we'll have Chris uh, uh, do a compression test and just kind of assess where this, what is it now, 29-year-old Evo is. <laughs> And, f and, f and figure it out. But I'll tell you, we rode, uh, what, 60 mi 50 miles here, 60? And it, it uh, seems to be running good. Yeah. No complaints so far. One drop of oil in the garage. <laughs> Is that all? <laughs> all right, Chris, good to meet you. So first vlog from the FXR. We'll let Kenny get past us because I don't really know where we're going here. So yeah, uh, Kenny knows Chris and uh, we're going to have to just kind of assess where we are in this bike before we think about doing anything to it. As I mentioned, the first thing I got to do is fix these pipes. They just look hideous with the with the header wrap on them. Just because whoever did it did a poor job. But this this has some really nice features. Um, some nice aftermarket work that was done by the previous owner. It's got Dyna tunable ignition. We just realized pulling the points cover off so um, Chris will be able to to tune it and we'll figure out how much horsepower and torque it's putting out as is and then you know if it's decent um, and if the compression's good which it probably is it's only got 33,000 miles on it then uh, I'll just pretty up this engine and um, and think about how to uh, improve the suspension a little bit. I want to improve the lighting on it a bit. It needs a seat and it needs pipes. And, you know, the front end work will be the most significant because I may want to go to a dual disc setup up front, in which case I'll probably go to a... Um, some kind of a Dyna front end so I can get some beefier forks and if I do that I'll probably go from this 21 to a um, to a 19 up front and if I do that I'll probably replace this uh, solid rear wheel too to match about the front end on this is uh, it's it's got this kind of skinny 21 inch tire and it, it just tracks all the grooves in the road and I, I don't like the way that feels the suspension itself up front is not all that bad I was expecting it to be worse 
I'm told that there are progressive springs in these forks, which helps a lot. The bike track's really nice and straight. You know, we'll look at the rubber mounts, uh, the, the engine mounts, and see what kind of shape they're in, and think about replacing those as well. Here's a, a chick on a bike. I don't know what that is she's on. Oh, it's a Sportster. She's got a, like a Pikachu backpack, it looks like. I think that's what that is. That's pretty cool. She's cruising 80, 80 miles an hour in that Sporty. See, this is grooved pavement here, and I can just feel the front wheel tracking these grooves. I don't know how loud the wind noise is going to be on this video. This thing came with this windshield, which does a nice job keeping the air off my chest. So, look, if you have been following this channel at all, you're more than likely into BMW motorcycles, as am I. Some of you will understand why I wanted to get another Harley, and some of you probably can't can't understand that decision at all. Um, so let me talk about it a little bit. There's nothing like being on that GS in terms of suspension and handling and, and really nice quick acceleration. You know, it's a, I think, at the crank it's 136 horsepower. At the crank, if I'm lucky, Right now I'm sitting on 70, and I, I bet I'm not that lucky. This, this thing doesn't handle anywhere near like the way the GS handles, and it, it's not supposed to. But what it does do is give an incredibly good feeling. Seat of the pants, torque, engine sound, comfort, and by comfort I mean I'm just out here in the wind, hanging out, sitting low. These are mid controls, they're not even forward controls, but my legs are comfortable. It's easy on, easy off. I'm wearing, you know, these are riding jeans with Dyneema in them with a good degree of protection, but I'm wearing jeans and a leather jacket. Because I am me, I've got a level two back protector on under this jacket, but Still, it just, it's a viscerally pleasing way to ride a motorcycle. And if you're gonna ride a Harley, an Evo is about as simple and reliable as it gets. A rubber mounted Evo is about as comfortable as it gets. And an FXR frame is about as uh, good a handling as it gets. And so you put all that together in this package and what's not to love? And I gotta tell you, I love it. And this particular one with this red paint, it's OEM, original. Looks great in the sun. When we were at Chris's shop, to me, this was the best looking bike in the parking lot. So I'm just really happy. And I, you know, it's Friday morning. I took off half a day to, to just go right out and meet Chris with Kenny. I'm going to go back home and, and work this afternoon. And I just feel really blessed today. And I'm glad y'all are here to share it with me. This is one of those rides I don't want it to end. I'm like, I'm like a kid with a big old smile under this helmet. Let me, let me turn to the Harley community and anybody that might be watching this who's a, who's a Harley guy. Um, I'd love to hear your comments about FXRs, FXRs versus Dynas, Evos versus Twin Cams versus Milwaukee 8. I'd love your advice on what I ought to do with the bike, what you'd like to see me do. I've been out of the game a long time. I've got some ideas, and I'll, just, I'll you know, just to, to kind of level set, I'm not going to be wheelie in this thing. I'm not going to be drag racing it. I'm not going to be racing it at all. But I do want it to perform. I want it to handle. I would say my number one priority is to make sure it's reliable, engine's reliable, and the bike handles. 
next is going to be probably budget. Next will be appearance. Probably in, that, in those orders of, of priority. I think I last owned a Harley and I think it was 2006. It may have been 2005. And most of the guys I used to ride with have kind of aged out of riding or they moved out of state. Um, but, you know, I'm, I'm not in it for the bro factor. I will definitely take this thing up to the rock star with a big smile on my face and kind of remember what it was like back in the 90s when I used to do that. But mostly I just want to ride through the canyons on this and enjoy the rumble. Enjoy being on an American bike. And um, and have a change of pace. And you know, I'm really lucky. I've got the GS. I've got the dirt bikes that I ride with my son, mostly on Saturdays. And now I'll have this for a change. And I'll have this for a project because I am gonna, I'm gonna put some time and money and energy into this bike.